This week, public outrage as dangerous sex offender TJD was granted bail. Education department feel the pressure as they fail to understand behaviour management in schools. Noongar Aboriginal camp in Lord Street was demolished by the state government. And ice dipping activity in Canada to support Special Olympics program. This is the Evening News with Ivan Lowe and Danielle Staniscom. Good evening. The outrage towards the release of WA's most dangerous sex offender TJD continues this week. He allegedly breached one of his reporting conditions and was remanded back to jail less than 24 hours after his release. In the light of public outrage, Howard Sattler speaks to a victim who survived abduction, sexual assault by another offender and shares her horrific ordeal as a warning to other women. I'm with Susie Gilmore and she's an of a victim of crime. Susie. Your incident happened a long time ago? Yes, way back in 1967. Yeah, how old were you then? I was just 15. Tell us what happened. I was walking home with a girlfriend and we split up to give each other the same distance to walk home. She made it home, I didn't. Where was this? In Busselton. I was only probably 50 metres from home when a car pulled up asking for directions. By the time I leant to the car window to answer them, the boot was open, two guys were behind me and I was in the boot and gone. Anyway, the story is I ended up um, at Pinjarra where the first sexual assaults took place and then... In a house? No, in a gravel pit. Um, then I ended up somewhere north of Perth towards Les Moody in an old unused scout camp and they kept me there for nearly eight days then brought me into a house which I later found out was in Cannington and um, turned out to be one of them's parents' house and the mum had only come home to feed her animal, didn't expect to see her son there, but even when she saw me, because he'd pushed me face first into the wall, I couldn't call out and she didn't think anything of it, she just thought, oh, my son's got a girl in the house. And the next day he said to me, look, I'm, they're planning to kill you and get rid of you, he said, because this has got way too deep, but I'm not going to be party to murder. He said, I've been party to the kidnap and I've been party to the rape and I won't come at murder. He said, there is still a streak of humanity. So there's no way, he said, tonight when you walk out to the shower, make it look as though you're coming to the shower with me. You won't be. He said, the back door will be open and you just bolt. I know they caught the culprits. What happened to them? Um, two of them got nine and five years respectively. They had money and a lawyer. The one that let me go got 18 years and the governor's pleasure, supposedly. He's the alive. Exactly. But they said because he was already in the system for other little offences, they made a pure example of him. Imagine when all that was over, you to try and get your life back together again. You're 15. You do. You're to school. I went back to school very briefly but couldn't cope. Um, people sniggered, people who were my friends would walk across the other side of the room to avoid me. My family, as far as my parents were concerned, she told, mum told my sisters it was never to be spoken of. Like counselling? No, counseling? no counselling back then. You're talking to me now, why? Why are you talking about me? I believe it's a story that needs to be told and also because every night on the news it seems somewhere there's another girl or a child trying to be grabbed and I don't want them to be treated like I was treated. I want a voice for the victims, not the criminals. What's life hold for you for the future? Life, hopefully now, holds a good future for Glenn and I. We'll rebuild, we'll move on and um, who knows what we hold, but we share a great, great sense of peace and companionship. So for the first time, talking to you, I'm relaxed and I'm able to speak and hopefully now life will be a better track and if me talking helps some other victims speak out, well then I've given something back too. And you can see Howard's news commentary right after the news. To other stories, the report into behaviour management in WA schools was tabled at the State Parliament. The Auditor General states the Department has failed to measure the success of different behaviour strategies. The latest report from the Auditor General shows there are not enough school psychologists in WA. 37% of student suspensions were related to physical assault or intimidation to students or staff. Meanwhile, principals and teachers spent at least 20% of their time to deal with behavioural problems every day. WA Auditor General Colin Murphy said the findings in the report were mixed. Uh, overall, the approach adopted by the Department of Ec Education is very sound, uh, but we found that the department really doesn't have a good handle 
uh, on what's going on in schools. They need better information about strategies and what's working and what's not. On the other hand, the opposition is concerned about the Barnett government's education funding cut, which will make it harder for schools to get assistance from psychologists. The Auditor General has confirmed there's not enough time allocated for those schools that need it the most and that the reduction in funds will make it harder for schools to top up the amount of time that they can get from school psychologists. Joseph Barker, WAMN News. The Swan Valley Noongar Aboriginal camp was demolished by the state government after the Premier made it clear two weeks ago that it would not be reopened. Police issued a move-on notice to demonstrators who gathered outside the camp on Wednesday morning. The site was closed back in 2003 by the Gallup government after incidents of rape, family violence, sexual and substance abuse occurred. The camp's leader, Aboriginal activist Robert Brofo, was later convicted of multiple cases of child sexual abuse. He was also charged with rape in 2008. The site will be made into a natural reserve. WA's new treasurer Mike Nahan along with new transport and finance minister Dean Nowder were sworn in at Government House after Troy Boswell's shocking departure. The new treasurer will have to work hard to regain WA's AAA credit rating while the new transport minister will have to resolve Perth's worsening traffic conditions. On the other hand, the government made a motion in Parliament to extend Mr Buzzwell's leave until April. More than 50 cyclists were caught in Northbridge for not following traffic rules. Police urged road users to stay alert as cyclists are more vulnerable to accidents. Ships Way reports. 52 cyclists were fined for traffic offences during a two-hour police blitz in Northbridge on Thursday afternoon. The operations took place at the centre of Wellington Street and Milligan Street and Fitzgerald Street and Aberdeen Street from 12pm to 2pm. 20 traffic infringements were issued for helmets, 10 for running a red light, 1 for failing to stop at a stop sign and 1 for talking on the phone while riding. Sergeant Simon Baxter from Traffic Enforcement Group said, Cyclists are vulnerable road users and they should obey the law at all times. If they take the risks of breaking the road rules, they put themselves at risk and leave themselves open for some serious injuries. But Fremantle Mayor Dr Brad Pettit feared a police crackdown would discourage users to use bicycles as a mode of transport. It would be fair to say, what my fear and why I contacted them is I don't want to see the enforcement around cycling lead to less cycling in, in Fremantle because we want to get more people on their bikes. Shipsway, WMN News. Calgary citizens and government staff took a dip in a pool on the frozen Arbois Lake to show their support for Special Olympics athletes. Participants welcome the challenge as the money will go to local Special Olympics program. Canadian correspondent Dustin Lowe and Zarif Alibi reports. More than 60 people participated in an event named Freezen for a reason. Last Sunday in the second annual Alberta Law Enforcement Torch Run, Polar Plunge at noon. It was cold off the start. It gets better once you get in the hot tub. All Warriors' ultimate mission is to raise funds for the most unique athletes in Alberta, which each jump actually worth $100. Money collected would be contributed to a local Special Olympics program. The Minister of Justice of Alberta, Jonathan Dennis, says we should support local communities and charities. Special Olympics, we've just had the Sochi Olympics this year, the Paralympics are going on right now. Uh, this is a great time to raise awareness for our Special Olympics, but also raise some funds and most importantly, have a great time. Zarif Alibi, Wham News. That's all we have for you this week. Thanks for watching. We're more news on our website, Facebook and Twitter. And here's Howard Sattler. Good evening, Howard. Thanks, Simon. Thank you, Danielle. Our State Attorney General Mishkin needs to make an urgent phone call. To who? To his Queensland counterpart to find out how that State's Minister managed to intervene in the sentence given to Daniel Morecambe's killer, Brett Cowan. Having just learned that the Queensland Attorney has personally ordered his State Director of Public Prosecution to appeal the 20-year non-parole and green of Cowan's sentence, we in West Australia are wondering why Mr Mission can't do the same thing or order our DPP to appeal the case of serial sex offender uh, known as, known as TJD. Any doubt that significant aspects of the WA judicial system, we think this all the time, don't we, over criminals over victims, has been removed when we learned that despite 13 convictions for serious sexual assaults on young women, a refusal to undertake counselling 
and recent breaches of the strict supervision orders, this man called TJD was given his freedom by a clearly misguided Supreme Court judge. It should have been no surprise to any of us that within days of his release, he'd been re-arrested for a breach of those orders. Thankfully, it was not for another attack. But potential new victims of this creature may also not be so fortunate to see. Fortunate to see since we learned that following his latest apprehension, he's out again on bail, awaiting another court appearance. That means TJD has nothing more to lose if he targets another victim in the next few days. His release and the inability of our Attorney General to overturn the judge's decision to release TJD and even the legal protections that allowed a 37-year-old serial offender to retain his anonymity. We don't even know who he is because his first offences were committed when he was just 15 in 1991. All have exposed serious flaws in the system. Now, Mr. Michigan, you have the power, you should have the power to correct them. If you don't ask for that power, you'll be guilty of taking the side of the criminals against victims of scumbags like TJD. I'll return next week. Meantime, keep up with the, up with the latest news. WAM and website is the place to go. And my blog site, howardsattler.me.